Wondering if you can break into a data career like BI, engineering, or architecture despite having a totally unrelated background? You can. What if you don't have a CS degree? It doesn't matter. How do I know? Because I did it, so why can't you? So how did I go from working in a biology lab to becoming a data architect? It's surprisingly not an uncommon story. Coming from a science background, I spent a lot of time working with data, like a lot of people do. When a coworker started building a simple access database, I offered to help out, which is the first thing. When an opportunity to shadow or be mentored by somebody comes along, jump on it. Eventually, he moved on to a job as a database developer, and he encouraged me to do the same thing. Thanks to all the time I'd spent dealing with data for all these years, I felt like I was capable of doing it. My first real data job was at a nonprofit as a DBA. Nonprofits can be a great entry point. They give you a lot of responsibility and a lot of freedom to learn because they can't pay you a lot. It's not a fancy fan company, but it'll give you a lot of really good experience that can quickly move you to the next level. I quickly moved into a transactional database developer role, which I stayed at for entirely too long. I felt like I was falling behind, so I started doing a lot of personal projects on cloud and modern data stacks, which then got me to my first data engineering roles, and then that quickly moved into data architecture roles. Engineers tend to have a lot of participation in architectural design decisions, so it's pretty easy to get that experience if you watch for those opportunities. So is my story unique? No, not at all. Most of the data professionals I've worked with have had similar stories. They started at companies doing healthcare or insurance or logistics or anything. They saw where they wanted to get to and they took classes or they self-taught. They found mentors and took jobs as analysts or report writers, whatever they had to do to get to the next step. From there, they took on jobs that led to engineering and architecture. I'd say the minority of my peers have a CS background or didn't take some sort of meandering path to get to where they are today. So do you need a CS degree or any degree for that matter? No, but it can help. When I started out, I felt I had a good background with data, but when it came to meetings with networking teams or infrastructure or information security, I did feel a little bit over my head. I had to take a lot of notes and do a lot of research to be able to get up to speed in those meetings. So it felt like a slight disadvantage, but nothing I couldn't overcome. Having no degree at all can be more of an obstacle, there's a lot of companies that don't care. If you can get the job done, it's great. But many companies, especially in traditional industries, have a hard requirement around degrees. It's unfortunate, but something to be aware of. But regardless of if you have a degree or what kind of degree you have, you have to be really good at self-learning. Data is changing at an insane pace, and if you stop learning, you'll be behind the curve in less than a year. The job you currently have will teach you a lot, but you don't want to get stuck in a bubble of only knowing what they do and how they do it and not be aware of the other techniques out there. You wanna pay attention to the larger data world. What tech are other companies using? What architectures are they going with? What tools do they use? That way, when it's time to move on, you don't seem closed-minded in interviews and only know the way your company does things. It will also allow you to bring innovation and new ideas to your current company. So when you are feeling stagnant and it is time to move on, don't just apply to your dream job. Do that, of course, but also keep an eye out for jobs that will fill gaps in your skill set. Consider each move to be a resume builder. If you only have experience at big companies, maybe apply to some smaller ones or vice versa. Have you only worked in lax environments? Maybe apply to some that are in a higher security industry so you can learn more about data security. Have you only worked as a full-time employee? Maybe try consulting. The key is to gain a variety of experience in a lot of different environments. That way you're a more versatile candidate and it opens up a lot of opportunities. The important thing is you don't allow yourself to get stuck and stagnant. We've all been there. You get into a role, you get comfortable, you become that go-to person, you just know everything and it's easy, but then you realize you've sort of fallen behind and you haven't been keeping up with the latest trends and technologies. Some people are fine with this and they just wanna find one good spot and stay there their whole career, but I'm guessing not you, viewer of videos on how to expand your careers. The key is recognizing that you're falling into this position. I try to keep up with what's going on by watching videos, reading blogs, just talking to other data engineers. If I keep hearing about a bunch of things that I've never heard about or never worked with, then it might be time to consider moving on. And I found that moving on and moving up are directly related. I like to keep a list of skills that I'm hoping to learn, and then I keep track of a list of things I've been working on and skills I've been using. And if those lists aren't really matching up, then it might be time to consider something else. Now this all applied to my experience and things are definitely changing. I've been working in data for about 10 years. And when I started, data engineering wasn't a very common term. Even business intelligence wasn't always used everywhere. So as data engineering becomes more well-defined and companies start realizing the demand and understanding the purpose of the position, we'll probably 
definitely see things shift more along the lines of software engineering. We'll see more data engineering programs in college and people planning to go directly into it. And it'll probably be common to have junior roles for people to go into that really haven't existed previously. Mostly the junior roles were report writing or analyst roles. But I think a lot of the key points that I use to get to where I am today will still be valid despite the changing environment. Besides, who knows how long it'll take for anybody to agree on what our titles mean and what we're supposed to be doing. Hit the like button if you get that frustration. And for more tips on interviewing and finding the right job for you, check out this video.